All right, good evening, everybody. Tonight, we're gonna to be doing our homework for populations and samples. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go through these with you. Uh, so uh, just enter all your answers in, and then uh, if you show me that you followed along and put the answers down, uh, you're pretty much gonna get 100 from me. So let's start here, number seven. Uh, of a group of 200 workers, 15 are chosen to participate and a survey about the number of miles they drive to work each week. In this situation, the sample consists of what? Well, remember, the group of 200 workers is our population. That's the total amount that we're talking about uh, getting this survey done by. But 15 are chosen. That's the sample from that population that we're gonna ask about. So the sample consists of 15. Uh, it says the sample consists of 15 workers selected to participate in the survey. The population consists of, well, the population is the 200 workers. The 200 workers indicate uh, what we're trying to figure out uh, how, uh, they said are uh, of the group of them, they are chosen uh, in the survey about the number of miles that they drive. So they wanna know out of the 200 workers how much they drive, but they're only gonna ask 15 of them as a sample to get an idea about the 200. Uh, if they wanted a more accurate sample, they would have increased the size of the sample and that would have gave them a better indication out of the 200. The closer to the 200 uh, workers that we ask, the more accurate our uh, survey is gonna be. So let's try number eight now. The ticket manager for a minor league baseball team awards prizes by drawing four numbers corresponding to the ticket stubs of four fans in attendance. In a situation, the sample consists of the blank people selected to win the prize. Well, let's remember, the ticket manager of the team awards prizes by drawing four numbers corresponding to the ticket stub numbers of four fans in attendance. So the sample size is four. The population consists of what? Well, all of the spectators who purchased tickets in the game. He only went ahead and drew four numbers out of all the people that were there. All the spectators would be the population and four would be the sample. Number nine, a supermarket conducts a survey to find the approximate number of its customers who like apple juice. What is the population of the survey? Well. Remember, it says the supermarket conducts a survey to find the approximate number of its customers who like apple juice. The population then is all of the customers. The population of all the supermarket customers is the population of this survey. A national appliance store chain is reviewing the performance of its 400 sales associate trainees. How can the store choose a representative sample of the trainees? Well, the store can randomly select trainees by assigning each trainee a number and then randomly selecting the number. The larger the sample size, the greater the confidence the store chain should have. We're going on to number 11 now. Number 11 says, of the 652 passengers on a cruise ship, 30 attended the magic show on board. What is the sample? Well, they selected 30. So 30 is the sample. The sample is the people who attended the magic show. What is the population? Well, the population would be the 652 people that are on the cruise ship. Number 12 says, the owner of a landscaping company is investigating whether his 120 employees would prefer a water cooler or a water bottle. Determine the population and representative sample of this situation. Well, it says he's investigating whether his 120 employees would prefer water cooler or bottled water. So the sample, the population consists of all the landscaping company's employees. A representative sample could consist of randomly selecting employees of the landscaping company. So we might go ahead and put all the company names 
on some list and then just go ahead and say every four people we're going to go ahead and put a check mark next to you and those people will be representing uh, the company as the sample that we're going to select. Number 13, higher order thinking. A bag contains six yellow marbles and 18 red marbles. If a representative sample contains two yellow marbles, then how many red marbles would you expect it to contain? Well, it says the bag contains six yellow marbles and 18 red marbles. Now, if a representative sample contains two yellow marbles, then how many red marbles would you expect it to contain? It says, this basically tells me there were 18 red marbles, right? So uh, because the ratio of yellow marbles to red marbles is one to three, remember we have, uh, let's see, it says contains six yellow marbles, 18 red marbles. There's, uh, if you take six uh, and divide it by, uh, 18 and divide it by six, that'd be one. So that'd be for every one yellow marble, there are three red marbles, okay? So they're saying, um, when it asks how many red marbles would you expect it to contain, uh, there would be six, all right? If a representative sample contains two yellow marbles, and how many red marbles would you expect to contain? Six. Because uh, if we're having two here, that means that's one third of that, right? Six divided by uh, three would be two. So 18 divided by three would be six. See how that works? The expected number of red marbles is three times the number of yellow marbles in the representative sample. Uh, number 14, Chung wants to determine the favorite hobbies among teachers at a school. How could uh, he generate a representative sample and why would it be helpful to generate multiple samples? Well, Chung could write the names of all the teachers at a school on a slip of paper and choose names from the hat. If he takes multiple samples, he can tell if his sampling method generates representative samples. Number 15, the table shows the result of a survey conducted to choose a new mascot. Yolanda says that the sample consists of 237 students at Technor Middle School. What was Yolanda's error? Well, Yolanda said that the sample consisted of 232 students. But as you can see uh, by the table that was in your book, Yolanda specified the 232 as a sample when instead she should have said that was the population. What is the example, uh, what is the sample size? Well, there were 40 students. Uh, I got to look at this carefully for a second because uh, it says the table shows the result of this. I don't see the table listed here. So give me a second here. Ah, oh, there we go. As we can see over here, 24 plus 6 plus 2 plus 8, that's going to make 40. So that was the sample size she was talking about. So out of the 237 students at the school, only 40 of them were selected uh, to go ahead and state uh, what was uh, the mascot, right? Which mascot they wanted. So uh, that was 40 was the sample size, 237 would be the population. Number 16, to predict the outcome of the vote for the town budget, the town manager assigned random numbers and selected 125 registered voters. He then called these voters and asked how they planned to vote. Is the town manager's sample representative of the population? Well, remember, they're trying to predict the outcome of a vote for a town budget. The town manager assigned random numbers and selected 125 registered voters. 
Uh, then he called those voters and asked how they planned it. It sounds to me like, yes, it is a random sample consisting of many members that reflect the population of registered voters. So that would be uh, the sample of representative of that population. Number 17, David wants to determine the number of students in his school who like Brussels sprouts. What is the population of David's, of David's study? Well, the population are going to be all the people in the school. Right? All the students at the school are the population. And if you, uh, if you wanted to go ahead and determine the number of students that wanted it, he can either ask everybody or get a sample and get an idea of it. Number 18. Researchers want to determine the percentage of Americans who have visited the Florida Everglade Park in Florida. The diagram shows the population of the study, as well as the sample used by the researchers. After their study, the researchers conclude that nearly 75% of Americans have visited the park. What error was likely made by the researchers? Well, let's look at this question carefully. They wanted to determine the percentage of Americans who have visited the park. The diagram shows the population of the study as well as the sample used by the researchers. Well, here's the sample and the sample, uh, and they said uh, the Florida Everglades National Park would just be that right there. And there's talking, the sample would be everything. Okay, after their study, the researchers conclude that nearly 75% of Americans visited the park. Where did they pick to go ahead and do their sample at Florida. Well, if you live in Florida, it's very likely that you're not that far from the park, right? So is it fair to say that that reflects all of America? I mean, if I'm living in Washington, Alaska, or Hawaii, what is the likelihood I'm gonna to go to Florida Everglades National Park? So the error the researchers made, because they took the sample of only Florida residents, the results do not accurately reflect the population of all Americans. This would be like going to a football game and asking everybody, uh, let's see, if they were all there in Chicago to see the Chicago Bears. And I asked everybody that came out of that stadium, who's your favorite football team? Would that really give me an accurate uh, reflection of the population of all Americans? No. I'm asking people from Chicago that are coming straight from a game from their favorite team. There are probably, most of them are going to say the Chicago Bears. If I wanted an accurate sample, I'd have to take a poll from an equal number of people from every state. B, give an example of steps researchers might take to improve this study. Well, the researchers can broaden the sample to include American citizens of all states. Number 19, an art teacher asked a sample of students if they would be interested in studying uh, art next year. Of the 30 students he surveyed, 81% are already enrolled in one of his art classes. Only 11% of the students are studying art this year. Did this teacher survey representative sample of the students in the school? Did the teacher survey a representative sample. Remember, representative sample means the people that he wants to go ahead and ask. And he said that he wanted he wanted to see how many people were going to study, uh, how many students were going to do it. So I'm going to say no. The students in this sample do not represent the entire student population. A majority of the members of this uh, survey are our students, but only 11% of them uh, are in the entire school start, uh, but only 11% of the students in the entire school study art. So how about the rest of the, what, 89% uh, of the people that they should have asked? Number 20, a supermarket wants to conduct a survey uh, to its customers to find out whether they enjoy oatmeal for breakfast. Describe how the supermarket would, could generate a representative sample of the survey. Well, the supermarket could ask people as they enter the store to choose uh, a marble 
from a bag that contains several different colors of marbles. If the marble is red, the, cover, the customer would get surveyed. Uh, if it wasn't, then they wouldn't. And that's a random sample. We have no idea who's going to pick the red marble. Uh, for all we know, uh, they could come from any walk of life. So there is no reason to believe that that would not be an accurate uh, survey to do. So yes, uh, using a, a bag of marbles, uh, maybe even uh, having them flip a coin, and if it came up heads, they would get surveyed. Uh, number 21. When is the manager of a clothing store uh, to measure customer satisfaction? She asks each shopper who makes big purchases for a rating of his or her overall shopping experience. Explain why Gwen's sampling method may not generate a representative sample. Well, think about it. If you get a big purchase, you're probably pretty happy with the store. But if you don't buy a big purchase, you might not have thought there were things in the store that you wanted. So, to generate a representative sample, Gwen must survey all types of customers, including those who make small purchases uh, or make no purchases at all. Maybe just standing by the store as people are exiting and ask them would have been a more accurate thing to do. Well, that was all of the homework. Um, hope you followed along. And if you have any questions, we'll discuss it on the teleconference tomorrow. Have a great day.